Ciao. My name is Max and I have a question for you. How many times have you been listening to your mix and thinking that your lead or the bass line aren't thick enough? And how many times have you been adding layers and layers of beefiness to your track to realize that at the end is just a big whole chunk of a mess? Well, today we're going to talk about the most important thing in the sound design that totally changed the sound design game for me since I started using it. Yes, the answer is noise. And not only layering noise makes a sound fuller, it also can make a sound stand out in overall mix. You might have seen doing this by a lot of producers out there, and that's because it's a very used technique and a very effective one, and I would like to discuss all the whys of that, and maybe check an example after that as well. First of all, let's start by saying that noise is everywhere. In the traffic outside your window, your fridge is making noise, air conditioning, the fans of your laptop or computer, whatever. There is noise all around us at any given time in our everyday life. And I dare you to try one of these super silent rooms for more than 15 minutes without going nuts. That's because we need noise in our lives so we can stand out on top of it. But most importantly, there is noise in electric circuits and cables. That's why we use shielded and balanced cables to minimize this noise. Now, if we think about the pre-digital era, every component of a studio, let's say in the 60s or in the 70s, was analog. And as we said, analog circuits generate noise. It wouldn't be that much if you take a single component like a synth or a compressor, but if you start routing them with the cables, the noise of each component will start adding up. And in my opinion, this is one of the reasons why analog sound sounds organic, because we have all these little noise parts in it, you know? And this doesn't really happen in the digital world where every sound is made perfectly with no artifacts whatsoever. And if you compare the music from the 80s with the music from the 60s, you will probably find that it is very clean, almost angelic sounding. Surely because digital DAWs were so revolutionary for that time, people were all about this pure sound almost too much pure. And let's be honest, we all love that analog sound. It has some sort of quality to it, you know? That's why nowadays we start adding noise ourselves, maybe to mimic the warmth of the analog sound or just to make a track to pop out in the mix more. We're gonna see an example just in a second, but before that, I would like to take a look at some charts. So the first one will be perception threshold over frequency. And basically what this tells us is that our ear perceives the same amount of loudness at a different amount of level for different frequencies. So let's say we have a 60 Hertz sub at 50 dB, okay. We're gonna hear that sub the same volume as if we played a synth at 800 Hertz at zero dB. And this is the overall curve for our perceived loudness. And as you can see, it kind of has this slope towards the high frequencies, right? And this will help us understand the next chart, the colors of noise. As we know, there are different types of noise. The most used ones will be the white noise and the pink noise which are these two in the center, okay? And then we have brown noise down below. And I never saw any synth or any sample that is blue or purple noise, but the brown and the pink noises are more similar to our perception line, right? They have this slope as well as our perception. So this will help you as well to choose the right noise when you are going to layer it with your track. 
And my advice is that if you have like a bass sound, I would really go for a white noise, which is very flat because we already have all that low frequency information. So we have to add the high frequencies more. That's why I wouldn't use the pink or the brown noise because those frequencies in your bass track will compete with your noise track. Obviously you also can EQ that out, but all the matter of workflow. Let me show you an example of how noise can make everything more organic. So we have our drums here. Yeah, maybe that snare drum is a little bit too much lush. Okay, yeah, that's better. And then we have this like music group, a bass line made with Vital. There is this serum patch, tall Uno, string-like strings, some future chords. And down below here we have the same exact group, but I just removed all or almost all noise uh, generators here. Now let's hear everything with the noise first. <laughs> And let's dissect a little bit. So here we have uh, our bass. Okay, and as you can hear, there are a lot of noise in it stand alone in that bass, but I bet you couldn't hear that in the overall mix, right? Let's go back to our tall Uno LX like strings. As you can see, my noise level is very high. And I bet you again, you didn't hear any noise at all in the mix when, when you first started listening. This is a very cool sound made with Anna too. And as you can see again, I have this Juno noise. I guess I can use pink noise here as well. And the volume as well is pretty high. So this is basically our bit of a track. And now let's compare it with no noise. We will start with no noise at all. And then I will toggle between them. Okay, here you go. These are very different and I would say that a no noise at all makes it more in my head, okay? But overall with the noise, it's more organic sounding. And if I would put afterwards like a lead line or a vocal, it will be a much fuller background, okay? Than without noise. With noise, it feels more live. If you see your track as more human as possible, it will translate afterwards. Every plugin out there, every synth out there has a noise generator in it. There is a reason for that because it is so important in the sound design. And the last thing that I would like to mention is that you can create a noise by doing FM synthesis. In this case, I have no noise here, okay? And this particularly works uh, very well with super sauce, but as well, if you use maybe just one voice and let's put, I don't know, uh, basic shapes. Yeah, a lot of voices, a lot of frequency modulation will give you that noise. And if you can implement this type of noise in your sound, I think it will be better. This is a very musical noise. It has some sort of characteristic of the original sound, right? You can barely hear those harmonics popping through that noise, right? 
So thank you for sticking around for so long in this video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something today. And if you did, subscribe to this channel. I post almost every Sunday plus other days of the week. Buy Bowl Form, which is my plug plugin for form and filtering. You can check the video as well here. And I will see you the next time. Ciao.